Merry Christmas to you all. I pray that if our Lord Jesus Christ tarries in coming, we shall celebrate many, many more in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, um, Merry Christmas. The pastor has led the lecture properly by letting us know that the purpose of Christ coming to the world is to come and reconcile us back to our God. Because the Bible says that all of us have come, that we have sinned and come and fall short of the glory of God. Who will reconcile us back to God is his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm talking, I will be speaking on a message titled Relationship. Relationship. What is a relationship? And why relationship? And what type of relationship do we have? We are going to be listening to him. But first and foremost, it is the God's purpose for humanity to be in relationship. If you see, if you check our Bible, Genesis 2, 18, he said, it is not good for the man to be alone. If it is not good for the man to be alone, it is not equally good for the woman to be alone. That means our God cherishes relationship. That means he doesn't want us to be lonely. He wants us to be in relationship. You know, when he created Adam, he was relating with him until he said, okay, this man must have a partner. I created somebody that is relating to him. So God is the author of relationship. Whatever happens, humanity must be in relationship. I thank our pastor for giving me this opportunity. May God continue to increase your knowledge, your anointing, and your grace. Your anointing will never run dry in Jesus' name. What is, let us now define relationship. So yeah, originally, I wanted to make it interactive so that uh, it do not be like teacher and student relationship. So I want everybody to participate in it. What is relationship? <coughs> Sister Mary, what do you want to have? So relationship is constant communication between two people. Okay, constant communication between two people. Who, who want to help us again? Who want to help us again? Daniel, any idea? I believe the Okay, thank you very much. So, without wasting our time, the dictionary defines relationship as an association or connection between two or more people. Association or connection between two or more people. That is, as we are here now, if we are not related together, we cannot be here. So husband and wife, their journey to marriage starts with what? Relationship. Relationship. I, I remember when I was a, a bachelor, there was one particular guy that normally passed through our, our street. What did I just sum up because I, I, I pursue her? I said, she, he stopped. She stopped. I said, I love you. He said, how did you come? When did you see me? That you say you love me. See, that, that one that is number one. Or you first start relationship before you love me. So what, what I'm trying to say is that before you say you love somebody, it must be relationship. That, yes, yeah, relationship will lead to another thing. It's not, I love you. He said, where did you know me? Where, where did you know me for you to, to say you love me? And I think that is a, our new message at that time. You don't know that we must first of all start with relationship before we need to marry. So relationship is a connection or association between two people. And what are the type 
of relationship we have. We have family relationship. <laughs> family relationship means father, mother, children in a relationship. That is number one. We have friendship. That is, we can say, we can cultivate friendship from school, from workplace, from friendship can come from anywhere. And you can be in friendship with uh, so many other people. That is a type of uh, relationship. We have acquaintances. Who is your acquaintance? Somebody you have relationship with in your neighborhood. They are not truly your friend. They are not truly your family, but they are your acquaintance because you live in the same neighborhood. They are your acquaintances. Then you have romantic relationship. That is um, between boyfriend, girlfriend, from there, now this to marry. That is romantic uh, relationship. We have spiritual relationship. Your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with your God. That is spiritual relationship. You remember um, Hebrew 10.25. He said, do not forsake the gathering of brethren. What that past is telling us is that we must be in constant relationship by communicating together to come and worship in the house of God. That is what that fast is telling us. That is, it's telling us that we must be in relationship to come and worship together. That is spiritual relationship. The, main, the, the, the one that is very, very important is your our relationship with Christ. Whatever relationship you are in, if you are not in relationship with Christ, you have not had any relationship. So let us, you must, you must ensure that your relationship with Christ is very robust at every given time. Let us open our Bible to Genesis 2.18. Genesis 2.18 and see what God said concerning relationship there. Are we there? Okay. He said, and the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. That is to say, God wants Adam to be in relationship with Eve. And that is the beginning of relationship. But before then, God was relating with Adam before he created a human being to go and and to go and you know be his uh, helpmate. What other area? I mentioned that friendship can be relationship can be from friendship. Proverbs 17, 17. Let us read Proverbs 17, 17. You will see that Bible says that friendship is like a uh, a message, a message, let us open our Bible to Proverbs 17, verse 17. If it's not there, a friend loves it. That, okay, read it. A friend, a friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. That is, when you have a very good friend, it is more than the brother. You will confide in him, two of you. you. You remember the friendship between David and Jonathan. David and Jonathan. To the extent that they have they form a covenant between them. And David and Jonathan, they form a very strong friendship, relationship. Let us now, what are the things that we can do to nurture a relationship. We know that you must have relationship. And we know that you must make relationship to be ongoing. What can we do to nurture a relationship? Pastor Kingsley. Uh, good communication and fellowship. One, good communication, yes, and fellowship. And fellowship. When? What other thing, Brother Abolabi? What can we do to nurture 
Failure judgment. Openness. Openness. Truthfulness. Yes. Yes. Love and care. Love and care. You remember that uh, woman in Second King four that told her husband and said, I have always been seeing this man of God passing through this place all the time. Please let us build a house for him. Maybe let us make a room for him at our rooftop and put bed and here, here. So that whenever he's passing by, he can go there and rest and sleep. What is that? That is care. So friendship must be nurtured by caring for one another. And what followed that care that that woman rendered to Elijah? What followed it? The, the man of God said, go and call that woman for me. He said, what can we do for you, for this good that you have done for us? And the woman said, no, I don't have anything because um, I'm not lacking anything. But Gehazi said, from the look of things, so it seems that this woman is lacking one particular thing. And Elijah said, by this time next year, you will carry a baby. You remember that photo in the Bible? Yes, sir. Second King chapter four is there. Because uh, we are not going to read it. So I said that uh, in 1 Samuel 20, 14, 14, second, 14 to 17, we saw the covenant between David and Jonathan. Solid one. Whereas Jonathan knew that he's going to lose the kingdom, yet he formed uh, you know, um, relationship and covenant with David to the extent that he, he didn't allow the father to, to kill David. What other thing can we do to nurture uh, uh, easy communication, truthfulness, care, and love? Uh, uh, what are the killers of relationship? If you can nurture it, care, we can not show, you know, communication, frequent communication with ourselves. Being, the Bible says that we should not swear by the earth or by heaven, but we must make sure that our yes is yes and our no is no. What does that mean? It means that you must be truthful to ourselves. We don't need to, if I tell a pastor Christian something, you don't need to say, say God, before I believe you. You must let, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because, but if you are in perpetual life, people will say, I want you to add another thing before I can believe you. You know, some Christians lie a lot too. Liars are when you borrow money from your friend. And for, the, for you to pay now, you are now to be done, you don't want to pay. Or you, you, you obtain loan from somebody, you don't want to pay the loan. That should not be found in the church. That is not how to nurture friendship or relationship. What are the killers of relationship? David, what are the killers of relationship? Unforgiveness. Huh? Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. God bless you. If you cannot forgive your partner in a relationship, you are not a good, uh, we, we call it uh, relational poverty. If you cannot relate with other people, or you are the type that you, you, can, you can create a relationship, you, can, you cannot maintain it, you have relational poverty. So people cannot keep relationship. Always fault finding fault. If you are a perpetual fault finder, you cannot keep relationship. You cannot keep it. Whenever your husband does something, you must complain. Whenever your wife does something, you must complain. Look at the salt is too much, pepper is too much, and this one is too much, Maggie is too much. If that is what, what you are seeing all the time. 
you will not be able to keep relationship. If whatever, whatever your husband does for you is always comparing him with other, you cannot keep relationship because you will be seeing the shortcoming all the time. So gossiping, unforgiveness, not appreciating other people or other partner will never keep a relationship. When you are comparing, for example now, if I go out and I see something good for my wife and I buy it for you and say, what is this one? Something they are selling for one pound, one pound short. And if it is even less than one pound, for him to have that mind and bring it for you, it is your, the onus is on you to say thank you. If, if you are going to that town, say thank you to whoever gave you a gift. Do you ever look down or say, I say, hey, Mr. Lekpeja is giving her his own home and uh, his wife uh, this watch. And you are giving me a card from Primax. No, appreciate. If you are not appreciating anything, you are a relationship killer. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are a relationship killer. What other thing can we do to kill relationship? I mentioned backbiting. Let us read uh, Judges 16. Judges 16, verse 3. Judges 16, verse 3. Quickly, because of our time. We see what the effect of backbiting in Judges 16, verse 3. Okay. And no, sorry, more numbers, sorry. Number 16, sorry. Number 16. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye did too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, he then lift ye up yourself above the congregation of the Lord. What happened was that these people gathered together, they are mocking, they are backbiting Moses, saying, are you the only one that had the Holy, Holy Spirit among God? Every other person among among here and among us here, we have Holy Spirit. God too is speaking to us. They are by fighting, they are mocking him. What happened to them? The land, the, the, the ground open and swallow all of them. Please don't by fight whoever that you are in relationship with and don't gossip. God hates it. And suspicion, when you are suspecting any somebody you are in relationship with, it will not. Uh, you know, make that relationship to flourish. It will not make it to flourish. Then sin and unfaithfulness will not make relationship, particularly with our God. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 said, it is not the, the ear of the Lord is not heavy and the heart is not shortened for him not to deliver us, but it's our sin that is separating us from him. So let your relationship with God be smooth. God will help us in Jesus' name. Another one, David said that unforgiveness is a very, you know, good point that spoils relationship. If you are the type that you don't forgive, the Bible says you must forgive 70 times seven. And if Bible says you must forgive 70 times 7. He's telling us not to hold anybody in our heart. He said, if you cannot forgive those who trespass against you, your Father in heaven will not forgive you. So forgiveness is number one thing that makes relationship to flourish. To flourish. Then, first finding, always looking for what to say about your partner or about anybody you are in relationship with. If you are not, if you are unable to keep relationship 
if you have a problem at workplace, have a problem in marriage, have a problem in neighborhood, have a problem in the church. Because there is no way nobody can not offend you. But if you are the type that you want to throw away the baby with the bathwater, that is not a good point. That is not a good thing. For us to maintain good relationship, we must have our elder, elder, I've said that we must have, we must be open to one another. We must communicate freely with one another. You must not hold anything, uh, you know, in our hand. Forgive easily, communicate genuinely with each other. Do not gossip or backbite or anybody you are in relationship with. Trust each other genuinely. And, and then don't be a professional first finder. All these ones, if you, if you do them, your relationship will be very good with whoever that you are in relation in relationship with. Before I close this uh, 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 message, let us read Second Corinthians seven. Sorry, Second Corinthians twelve. Quickly, let us read Second Corinthians twelve. We are going to see how it is a, how important relationship is in the Bible. First, first Corinthians twelve from fifteen to twenty two. Quickly. I will appreciate if you can put a new King James fashion, please. New King James fashion. Thank you. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, let us li listen to this uh, fast, verses. Where 15 said, if the foot say, because I'm not a hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ears should say, because I am not of, of I am not an eye, I am not I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be where would be the ear? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. He pleased. And if they were all one, all, men, all one member, where would the body be? By, but now, indeed, there are many, there are many members, yet one body. 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again, the head to the foot, I have no need of you. No, no, much, much rather, those members of the body which seem to be weaker are. Necessary 21, the last part. No, okay, I've read it. So, what I'm saying is that every part of our body is important. If you want to know that every part of your body is important, you just you know, cut this one. I'm not saying cut it off, you just mark it with black and see the pain that will be coming from me. You will feel the pain throughout, you know, every part of your body. What I'm saying is that the Bible, uh, God wants us to be in partnership, and we need each other. We need each other. You can see when we close now. See how many, how to come together to carry the share. If you leave it for one person, they will carry it, but it take time. But see how many of us come together and carry it in no time. What I'm saying is that relationship is very important and God shall be it and we must maintain it at all times. Finally, in whatever relationship you are, please, this is a festive period, this is Christmas period. 
and we are marking the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not forsake the relationship with your Christ. And when you have good relationship with Christ, we have good relationship with our Father in heaven. He said, nobody can come to my Father except through me. May God make us to have good relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have good relationship with God, with Jesus, what is the essence of our worship? What is the essence of our worship if we cannot keep constant and robust relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ? May God help us to maintain good relationship with Jesus Christ and by extension with our God in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and adoration. You are the one that created relationship from, from heaven. Because you said it is not good for the man to be alone. And if it is not good for the man to be alone, it is not good for the woman too to be alone. That means we want us to be in good relationship. My Father, my God, could give us a heart that relates with others very well, that will not be finding fault in other people, and that will make us to have good relationship with your son. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.